Okay guys, today we have James Finch, uh, one of Cheltenham Running Club's members. James uh, has had an amazing year, uh, started with us probably a, bit, a little over a year ago, but um, almost considered himself a beginner uh, when he started and quickly moved through the groups. And uh, recently, James ran his uh, fastest half marathon at, at Manchester. James, um, can you remember where you were when you sort of first found us? Uh, as a club in regards to your running <laughs> yeah yeah probably trying to find my own feet <laughs> um just uh just beginning this epic uh year really like trying to find where i was in terms of pace um i remember coming to you and you i didn't know what pace i was and i was like well i did this race 10 years ago and i want to try and get to that <laughs> and uh, you quickly analyzed i was nowhere near that pace <laughs> so yeah. um, how, how do you compare now i yeah well i'm just i honestly thought i would never get to that pace again i honestly thought that that was like beyond me i thought like you know 10 years ago it's you're too old you're never gonna get there and now i've surpassed it and i can't believe it come on do you want to disclose what sort of pace we're talking about here yeah yeah so um Ten years ago, I did uh, Cheltenham Half, and I did it in one thirty-three something. Um, nice. And Manchester, I did it in one twenty-five. So yeah, I was. That, that's your recent results, right? That was my recent result. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so and, and sorry, was... the, the ten years ago was the one thirty-three. Yeah, one thirty-three. Yeah, I, I did <sighs> beat it in August. In, um, oh uh bolted on the water i think it was yeah um which is a great race uh but i only did it by seconds so in manchester i bit, i did it by six minutes which was never planned it was never predicted um which really was a, a massive pleasant surprise fantastic fantastic so how would you compare your training over the last year to what it was like before you know 10 years ago before you did your your half marathon back then was it similar or no just, way, yeah. just younger and naturally no fit if you said to me training 10 years ago i'd be like for what <laughs> <laughs> i literally just turned up to that race um 10 years ago and did it and i was in a lot of pain for two days um i ran spor sporadically like maybe once a week maybe once a month even like <laughs> i just yeah, on the cuff, just running here and there whenever I felt it. But but now I I run in three times a week. Um, I run when I don't feel like running. <laughs> so you know, it's 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 um it's gone from running when I feel like I want to to running is now part of my life. And nice. um, yeah, it's changed and, me forever. But also racing, right? You're doing oh. loads and loads of races. So do you want to tell us a bit about? How many races, what kinds of races you've been doing over the last year? Where do I begin? It's an addiction, isn't it? Like, I, I think <laughs> I, I, it all started when I did, I did try in the park in June of last year. And then I just got really addicted and then just started doing loads of running races and uh, triathlons. I've done local ones in Shrewsbury, Cleve, Forest of Dean. Uh, majority probably half and 10Ks, half marathons and 10Ks. But I've done big ones like the Manchester Marathon, uh, the Chicago Marathon. Um, I'm doing the Valencia Marathon at the end of this month. Um, and I've done look, eight triathlons now at, at different speeds, uh, different um, variants from sprint, super sprint to uh, middle distance. Um, and I've got Ironman next year in Italy. Um, yeah, so it's the, the, the rate I, if I had to guess, I don't know, 40, maybe 45 races this year. Yeah. Amazing. amazing. Yeah. It feels like it's every weekend. We talk to you at club runs and it's like, what you're racing again this weekend. <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't know how I haven't got an injury. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, you, you just, you just, you, you say you do lots of injury prevention, right? Like that, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, t I taper as much as I can during the week. Um, I'm adapting slower runs in, week in, week out, to just, like, 
you know, look after my body. Uh, listening to your body is massive, I think, um, because it's like taking your ego to one side and be like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. You know, like when we went on the run on uh, Saturday and I saw you and um, uh, Rich, and Rich yeah. running off and I was just like, I'm just going to stay with Greg, um, you know, because I, 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 I just knew it was the right thing to do just to let myself heal. Hmm. So, yeah. What had you done before that? Because that was Saturday. Had you raced recently? Yeah, yeah. So I did the uh, Apocalypse Run on Sunday, uh, which was a 10-mile uh, loop at, by Standish Woods, um, which last year I did it in something like 132, and I took 11 minutes off from last year huh. which is nice. it's just you love to see it don't you the progression it's great yeah. yeah yeah and it's fantastic you can actually see it in numbers as well right you could yeah. record everything on on garmin and strava and um you can compare compare exactly you know, what speeds you've done uh yeah it is fantastic i mean as far as pre-race routines do you have anything that you try and get in you know in the sort of 24 hours before a race yeah, massively. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I'm quite religious to this. I, I'm a stickler when it comes to routine. Um, and I, if I don't do my race routine correctly, uh, the same way, I, I get very, uh, I don't know, superstitious as the word. Um, but like lots of carbs the night before, you know, pasta, whatever, you know, whatever works for you. But, you know, for me, carb loading is a massive yes. Uh, especially for major races like marathons. Um, and then I, I take all my pre-race supplements, um, powders, tailwind, uh, make sure I've got my gels. Um, you know, I, like before I met Rich and Lee in the club, I never knew about gels. I never knew how important they really were. And then started taking them during races. And I was like, this does make a massive difference. It's mm -hmm. a game changer. It really is. And yep. if there's anyone out there who hasn't taken gels during a race, <laughs> honestly, I swear by it. You, you've got to try it. It, it does make a massive difference. Um, yeah, that and, and just make sure you get there plenty of time early on your race. So you're not having to rush around because I've done that, turned up late and then, you know, needing the bathroom and the queues are massive. And the bigger the events, the, the bigger the queue. Um, you know, I've had to start races dying for the bathroom and then just somehow yeah. get through it. <laughs> so, yeah yeah it's no, not the greatest nice. feeling <laughs> yeah especially when races are delayed and the starts are delayed oh yeah 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 and cool. another thing as well bin bags and the code races i it does i know it's, it looks ridiculous it really does but you you i can tell i trust you now there is you won't be the only one wearing a bin bag on race day i can tell you now yeah so and, and, for those that don't know what the hell you're talking about you mean cutting <laughs> holes three holes in the bag and yeah. putting it over your head right yeah exactly that yeah like you're going to all you can eat <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice nice anything else pre-race that you do think do you what warm up do you do much yeah. warm up beforehand um, massive yeah I, yep. I i mean you you can type that more than anyone like if like for me i always find the first two miles of race the hardest because my body is cold it's stiff um, I'm not in the zone, I'm not getting ready. And, you know, the more you can do just to, you know, warm yourself up, like to give you a perfect example, like I did my 5k TB at Cheltenham Park Run and I ran uh, three miles uh, from the Lido to the Park Run. So I was plenty warmed up, ready to go. And I went straight into that Park Run, I got my PB. And it was on a really cold day as well. So I find that if you're you know, really warmed up, you've got all your muscles going, um, you know, tr you have to treat your body almost like it's a car, you know, really uh, just engage it into the right gear. Mm. No, absolutely. Now that, that car analogy is huge. There's, there's loads of carryover for that. So uh, what about during the race? What, anything that you try and keep in mind while you're racing? Uh, yeah. Uh, pace wise especially the first three four miles don't you know you, you can get so competitive with other people and they're all racing off and they're doing their own strategy but you just got to focus and 
make you know your it's you in this race and just you you're going at your pace you know what what just think about what you want from it you know uh go off steady and then slowly get into the pace that you want because so many people obviously start off flying at the traps um yeah and and you've told me that many a time so yeah <laughs> we've all we've all made the mistake right like yeah. you know it's uh i think every runner has gone off too quick so it's not like and then so often we have to learn it the hard way right you know no matter how much someone tells you um often we need to make a few mistakes to properly learn uh, <laughs> so what what about um how do you know whether it's the right pace if you run it enough times you kind of know um and also, I think what helps a lot is these races that I've done. So, for instance, Manchester half. Uh, I ran with Rich, who I run with a lot in the club. And, you know, he's someone I know I can run with. Uh, but those first three miles in Manchester, I, I really was uh, quite struggling. And I, I and I had to say to myself, I was like, you, you can run with Rich. You ran with him before. So this is fine. You can manage this. And once I got past that, I was comfortable and I was running okay. And then that's when I started to, to take off. Um, so it's just, it's just trying to find, I don't know, uh, whatever works, whether you're looking at a watch and seeing what time you're doing or, or maybe sticking with a slower pace and then going faster once you get to a, you know, a good zone, um, uh, whatever works for you really. Mm, yeah. But when me and Rich left you behind on Saturday, he actually talked a bit about that race about, um, yeah, him, you sticking with him and then leaving him behind and him realizing he wasn't going to go with you. Um, so, I mean, that, you know, for, for me, it sounds like that was your ultimate performance because Rich is, yeah, has a, got to be one of, if not the quickest in the club over oh, certain yeah. distances, right? Um, he, he's always out front on a Thursday night. I, I remember a year ago and I ran with him and he left me after two miles and I, I was gassed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. no, but, it's um, great. It was a, it was a great experience. I mean, I still, I still think he could have kept with me or on a on a on his good day. Yep. Also run, also racing a lot. I mean, how do you, you know, when you are racing so much, how do you? Is there anything you can do to kind of prioritize, as in to, to make sure that you have a good race versus maybe some races are a lower priority, or do you not really think about that? Are you just trying to hit your best performance? for every single one obviously i'd love to hit you know pbs for every single one but uh you know it's it's hard to do that like so these these half marathons i was doing leading up to chicago i was kind of thinking to myself i'll, I'll prioritize chicago and i'll use the half marathons as uh, as a good pacing guide um but then when i got to the halves i really love i love half marathon pace i i love the distance it's my favorite distance to run um i kind of prioritize them in the end over the chicago marathon and i thought to myself Do you know what? i'll just go to chicago and just enjoy it i'll go at like a really super slow super slow speed and just just enjoy the race because i i didn't put any long distance runs into it um and I, you know, you can't go into a marathon looking for a PB when you haven't, you know, properly trained for it. So it was just for me, it was just to enjoy the event and get through it and it, enjoy it for what it was. Um, yeah. You know, so I don't know. I, I think just maybe not running throughout the week as as hard. So you prioritize all your efforts into that one week. You know, like um, doing park run the day before. Some people say it's a good. Um, warm up for a race the next day um and to be honest i don't know i'm kind of stuck between the two I, i'm like should you like have, do no exercise a weekly up to a race but then i've done a park run the day before really fast park run and then gone into a race the next day and i've been completely fine so i'm still learning what what's good i don't have a clue to be honest hmm. i think it really depends on what you've exposed your body to and adapted to i think um for a, someone like myself who's been trying to make sure that i always have a rest day after a, a strong run um i i wouldn't tempt face and, and try and or expect a good result from a day after pushing myself even in a 5k for you know 
I suppose myself included these days, 5K is a very short distance. But if you really go for it, it's still going to put some stress on your system. Oh, yeah. um, but if you're used to doing that, putting stress on your system and then backing up the day after, then it might not be a problem, right? Um, but uh, for, I think for a lot of, let's say, in less experienced runners, um, it, I think it would expect would expect it has an, has an, an effect. We cert I've certainly had many clients over the years who have been addicted to park run. They've been doing it you know, forever, but then now they're telling me they want to move, push on to 10K. Um, and it's like, well, when are you going to do your long run? Oh, I'll do that on Sunday. I've got a free day. And it's like, okay, are you going to stop park run? No, 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 I'm, I'll, I'll keep park run. That's fine. You know, I'm like, all right. But, you know, the speeds on Sunday are going to have to be slower because of what you're doing to yourself at park run. Um, but again, if they keep it up, your body adapts and, and eventually you can do both. Um, yeah. But it just, it's short term pain for long-term gain really um and, and i suppose that's what we're all starting to expose our to ourselves to now with preparing for the run to paris event um have you been intentionally doing any sort of back-to-back -back runs in preparation for that or is that, is that not really featured in your thoughts yet hasn't entered my thoughts um i think the fact that i train uh was it tuesday wednesday thursday runs in a row i think that's kind of prepped me for that not to mention the fact with the intensity of my training, um, you know, I do swimming and cycling on top of that, which is endurance based, may not be related to running, but it does exercise um, endurance. But I, I think that I don't think I should struggle when it comes to that, to the four days in a row. I think I should be fine. Uh, it just depends, obviously, on the pace of the group that we're going at. I'm sure that they'll be sensible, though, and we'll choose a good pace to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I was out on a run today and I was thinking, oh, you know, I'm feeling quite good. I wonder how I will feel doing, you know, if I want to, because I'm quite a competitive person by nature and I like to, you know, put put people under a bit of stress when I'm feeling good. But obviously, Run to Paris, for those that don't know, Run to Paris is four half marathons in four days, at least half marathons. So the faster members of, of the team of five will run further than a half marathon uh, on each day, assume that they don't break down or run too fast and need to recover the next day. Um, and so really on some days as well. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, but no, I think, I think, I know that you'll be fine uh, just with the quantity of running that you're doing, um, as long as you can stay injury free. <laughs> so, <laughs> <That's weird. laughs> and, and you've not been plagued with much at all, have you? I've not really heard you complain about injuries. Oh, we've all got niggles. It's, we've all got niggles. Niggles is just part of the journey, isn't it? It's um, just got to manage it. That's the thing. I, I I don't think that there's been a day in five, six months that I felt fresh. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure you can relate to that. Like if you're, you know, full on training and and competing, it just it, it's part of life. You just got to enjoy it uh, somehow. <laughs> um, like the... Um, the race, the apocalypse run is very hilly and then running down. Um, like my glutes, oh, they felt on fire this morning. Uh, I think that's from the pounding of going down that steep hill. Yeah. 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 So what, what if in, not injury or niggles, what has been your biggest challenge over the last year with what you've been trying to achieve? Do you think? biggest challenge in terms of injuries or just in, in general with with trying to achieve what you have you know has it been injuries has it been just the logistics of trying to fit in the training when you want you know you yeah time time, time. is the hardest thing without a yep. shadow of a doubt like um that i quickly learned that time is a a, a commodity that i just don't have enough of <laughs> so um if, if people don't know i i i am an avid triathlete and i love to to try and train for uh, for swimming, cycling as well. But running is obviously my, my main passion. Um, and trying to fit it all in with a job and then with hobbies and, and you know, personal life as well. It's just so hard. Um, mm -hmm. And it's so easy just to say, oh, I'll skip that training session, you know. But I feel to my in my head, I'm like, if I just skip a training session, then I'll skip another one. And then you're slowly on the down slope, you know. So, yeah. It's all about keeping that intensity, especially during the winter period, because that's the one time you don't want to train. Um, I mean, do you remember, Connor, you must remember last year when we were training in the mist 
and we're running through that park and we're collecting ice in our hair. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, what is this? Who, what, what are we doing? People think we're, we're mad. We're trading in this. Yeah. But yeah. It, it stays like that. But then when we get to the summer and then the pay, the payback, you know, it all comes back. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I personally get something out of that. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of the time we say, you know, did you enjoy your run? It's like, well, I didn't necessarily enjoy it. I enjoyed being, having finished it. You know, I felt really good for that. And actually, the more suffering you go through, whether that's because you ran really fast or you ran up big hills or it was slippery or it was cold or hot, I guess the more suffering you've done, personally for me, I feel like the reward for having done that is bigger. Do you know what yeah, I mean? And, absolutely. And, 110%. Yeah. Like, that for me is the most important thing ever is last year during the winter months when you get back from work and you're not feeling 100% you're feeling a bit like just want to put your feet up maybe you know watch some tv or something and then you're like oh it's it's Thursday night gotta go run and you're like should I go and you're like you kind of want to and then you do and then you finish the run and you're like oh I didn't really enjoy that but it's good that you did it because you still lap the person on the couch you know yeah you're still yeah. you're still pushing yourself you still did the run you know you didn't it didn't do it as fast as you may have wanted to but you did it yeah uh, no absolutely it's uh yeah, it's good it's um it really does provide I mean, what what does it give you what do you think giving uh sorry running and whether it's triathlon you know racing just having these events to look forward to what does it what does it give you in life what's the point well uh it's for me it's like a a point of achievement you know like i'll do it because i can do it you know like i'm fortunate to be you know touch wood 100 percent healthy and fit so i can do these events um you know there's probably a lot of people out there that can't do these things and they want to do these things you know i've got a couple of people that have been injured who can't run um and they'd love to do that so i'm very fortunate to be in that position um but also it's like the endorphin release like for me, it's the greatest drug on earth, isn't it? I mean, when you when you find that finish line, you put everything in it, and you just do that that sprint finish and that that feeling at the end when you've completed it. There's nothing better, mm. honestly. It's it's the greatest feeling ever, apart from that one time at Siren when you had the uh, the beer bucket. I think that kind of trumped it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's finishing a hot race with a cold beer. Was that quite good, was it? <laughs> that was the highlight of the summer, Connor. <laughs> that was a, a one-time thing, and yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun oh, it was, too. It was, a, it was a great day that was in Siren, and a fantastic race as well. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure we'll do it again next year. I think the evening evening events, I mean, that's something, it's different, isn't it? Most events we do are, are in the morning, so it's yeah. not really, I mean, I suppose you could bring some beers along after a morning race, but it's it's not quite early. the same as an afternoon race, right? Just to yeah, have a cold It's a, it's a bit bottle. early for the morning beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, and, and look, yeah, that's, yeah there's, there's loads of, of evening races, so hopefully we'll do more of that next year. But what is next for you, James? You know, you've had an amazing year. Are you still expecting to improve or are you um, or is it going to be more about more tourism, more race tourism? Or what, what do you what do you think? Well, the race season isn't done just yet, is it? I've got a uh, five miler in Tewkesbury this weekend. Um, and then there's an event that Greg posted just recently, which I've entered, which is a 10K in the Forest of Dean. And then my season pretty much comes to almost a halt because there's a 10K we're doing again in Castle Coombe after that, I think. And then the Valencia Marathon, um, which is my final big race of the season. Um, and I'm trying to get some longer runs in now, um, trying to, because it's really flat. And, um, you know, I, I experienced some of the course because I did a half, half marathon there two weeks ago. Um, so I know some of the route so i got i kind of got like a leg up um so i'm hoping fingers crossed i can get my pb so nice yeah nice. fingers crossed i've yeah. got two results of marathons though so it's kind of you know in my favor <laughs> yeah okay cool but still you know you you've got to not get carried away on the day you've got to no. execute uh you know what you've got planned and yeah no i feel pretty Six confident about that but it, but 
you say that your season will end. What what changes when your season ends? You're not booking any big race, no more marathons for the rest of the year, no half marathons for the rest of the year. No, the- no, no. After that, it's just fun ones. Uh, we've got like a 10K in December, which I'll probably get dressed up as Santa Claus. Um, they got the Seven Sins, which I'm, I'm sure you've heard of in the Forest of Dean. That looks really fun. Uh, some muddy trail ones that I'm not used to. Um, but it's just going to be training, just just getting into the groove of training. I think winter training last season um, was very strenuous, and it was, and I, I think it was very important. I don't think I'd be here today if it wasn't for the winter training that I did um, and just stick into that schedule. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's not, it's not fun. Some of the days, I definitely remember some of the days of going and I'm not enjoying it, um, but I wouldn't be here today without doing it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like waking up at 6.45 AM to go and do the morning swim on Saturday. Like that's a killer. Oh, that is a killer, but it's all good prep. You know, you yeah. can't just you can't just turn up to these races and expect to to do them and do well and and not you know end up in some negative state. <laughs> you know, you wanna you wanna put yourself in the best position possible. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, mate. I mean, what you've done, not just the events you've done, but uh, you know the progress you've made over the last year is a real inspiration to, to our club members and you know it's great they can see that on strava you know they can see whether even if they haven't met you before they can see you know you're in the in the Cheltenham running club strava group so they can see what you've achieved and um and no matter how fast they are or fit they are or unfit they are uh it, it's good for everyone even myself to to see people who are you know going at it and um and achieving great things and and enjoying it getting the rewards for it so so well done yeah and and just to to add as well like um a lot of people tend to not go on races if they're going alone um and i've entered so many races on my own and i've met uh so many individuals and friends just random people um and people just randomly add me on on strava and you can make so many connections um from around the world just meeting people at these random races so it really is worth it sometimes just to go alone and you never know who you're going to bump into. That's it. Is, is there anything else that you want to say to, to, uh, to you know, I'm watching today? Ah, uh, just, just enjoy it. Just, in, you know, don't put any pressure on yourself. Like when I got my PB in August, I kind of got addicted to getting the PB and then went through three races wanting to get it. And I really, it really, put me off the race um and then i went into manchester not expecting it and got it so sometimes the best times that you run are when you don't expect it yeah great yeah just take take the pressure off absolutely people do get stuck in that rut of expecting to get a pb every weekend they go to park run for example or you know it's just entering too many races and you know, each race is different, isn't it? The, yeah. Whether it be the terrain or the hill profile or the wind, uh, the heat. Um, so, yeah, sometimes, as you say, sometimes it, it does just come together on the day when you're not expecting it. Yeah, yeah. Just, just remember why you started running in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy the training as well. Yeah. I'm Fantastic. Sure. Thanks, James. We'll uh, catch up with you probably Thursday night.